hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we are doing something that I get asked about all the time and I can't believe I haven't made this video yet. So occasionally, sometimes I just feel like I've made every single wedding planning advice video under the sun. And then on moments like this where I'm like, how have I not made this video yet? Every single week over on Instagram, I do a Q&A Monday. We also do unpopular wedding opinions on Thursdays, which I will say for a lot of our followers is like the highlight of the week. So if you're not following us there, like you're missing, you are, you are very much missing out for sure. But one thing that consistently gets brought up is like, I'm getting married on Saturday. Any last minute tips? Or I'm getting married in a month. Any last minute tips? And I'm always like, why don't I have a video to refer to for this? Like a last minute, here's all of the things you wrap up and get done like right before your, why, like, why does it not exist yet? So I keep forgetting to make it um, until today. So um, if you were over here from Q&A Monday and you asked what you should be remembering, you're welcome and also thank you for asking this question because that's why this video exists. Instagram is definitely a great place for me to connect with viewers on a much more specific and intimate level because like obviously comments are a lot and I digress. So this video is going to apply to everyone in the last like one to four weeks before your event. So if you're like a month out, great, start working on this stuff ahead of time. If you're a week out, that's still okay. It's feasible to get this stuff done in a timely manner, all right? Like, obviously, this is not the night before your wedding. So we're talking like last minute, I mean like last four to one weeks. Now, of course, last minute tips are going to vary for everybody. Like, this is not gonna, this is not a one size fits all type thing. If you already have it done or you've already figured this out ahead of time, then like clearly it's not gonna apply to you. So like, don't worry about putting the effort into typing up the comment like, that doesn't apply to me. We know, it's okay. You can just ignore that point and move on. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Just popping in here real quick because uh, we finally put something together that you guys have been asking for for a really long time. <laughs> Hi, by the way, editing Jamie who's decided to sit in front of her full setup for this. The biggest fear that people have at the last minute is forgetting something. So I put together the top 25 most commonly forgotten things from that other video in a list, in a checklist for you to download. So if you are in that last minute crunch and you're like panic mode, go check it out. I'm gonna link it right here. It will also be linked in the description box below in case you're sufficiently stressed out by the end of this video and then decide that you need it and you don't wanna skip back to this part of the video. Okay, now back to other Jamie with the different hair, thank you. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna need to do is figure out your whole fit situation. You need to try on everything for your wedding day outfit all at the same time. So if you are choosing to wear a dress and you have specific undergarments that you are wearing with that, you need to put them on all together. You need to put on your shoes with your dress. Practice walking around. If you've not broken in your shoes already, now is going to be like the, the time for you to be focusing on that. So if you have a couple weeks left, start breaking in those shoes now so they are more comfortable for you on your wedding day. Now's the time to try it on with any sort of shapewear that you might have. Uh, I did not try it on with my shapewear beforehand. And guess what? The top of my Spanx were peeking out from my dress like 50% of my wedding. <laughs> It's not, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's annoying and like clearly like not the greatest situation to go through, but it's not life ending. Just try it all on together. You're also going to want to, when it comes to her whole outfit situation, make sure your rings are cleaned. And if you are getting your nails done, make sure that is done as well. Uh, that's more like the last, obviously week or so. You're not doing that a month in advance. Otherwise they won't look, they won't look good. But y'all know that y'all know how, how nails work. Um, confirm this is the next category. Okay. You worked really hard to get here. You worked so hard to get to this point. You have planned and planned your little fingertips off, okay? So now is the time that we're just confirming with several groups of people and things. First, confirm your timeline. This is more of like two weeks out, all right? Confirm that you have a timeline that you've passed it out to all of your vendors or a coordinator has passed it out on your behalf. And you've also passed that out to anyone who's involved in the wedding party and needs to be at your event at a certain time or needs to know when things are happening. You don't have to give the timeline to everybody, but there are people who feel better knowing that they have that. That would be like the wedding party and family members. Um, so confirm that you have a timeline and confirm that you have sent that out to the people that need to receive it. You're also gonna wanna confirm arrival times because obviously if the photographer's showing up at 11 and you and your spouse to be in the wedding party aren't arriving until noon, then you're paying for an hour of little to no photos whatsoever. So confirm arrival times uh, with all of your vendors and with your wedding party and family members. And then uh, also run that through your timeline to make sure that it's not going to be interrupting anything, like your catering isn't gonna be interrupting your ceremony if they show up during that time. It's happened before, so it's just something you need to be aware of. Like, are the arrival times going to be interrupting anything on your timeline? You also need to confirm with anyone that's going to be mic'd at any point in time. One, confirm that the DJ is ready to be miking those things. Is your DJ going to be miking your efficient? Uh, is your DJ going to be miking your vows? I actually do strongly recommend in most situations that a mic be used for those because even if it's, you know, 
100 people, 50 people. Sometimes it's still really hard to hear in the back, depending on if you're outside or different locations. Only go micless if you're absolutely convinced that it's 100% not necessary, which most of the time I think it's just a nice added benefit, which of course your videographer will love too if they're plugging directly into the system or they may mic you individually. But now I digress, we're going into the details, into the weeds, and that doesn't help you here. Just confirm that there's a mic. Uh, we need to know if it has a cord attached to it. We need to know if it's a, a lavalier, a lapel mic for your efficient because he or she may need to pull it out to hold it in front of you guys for your vow. We need to know if it's cordless. Can someone walk around while giving a toast or are they gonna be anchored next to the DJ? There's not a huge downside to any single one of these. This is also uh, where you wanna confirm with people who are giving toasts. Hey, I know we talked about this like three months ago. How you feeling, slugger? You ready? <laughs> you could be the type that says, also, can I see your speech beforehand? There are a few of you out there. I know who you are. I know. <laughs> Other people would be like, I could never. These people exist and I'm giving you space. This is the time when that you would ask to review those speeches, okay? It also gives you the opportunity to reassure them. It doesn't matter what you say or maybe it does. Um, but just so you know, like you are going to be the third giving a toast. So again, we're confirming with them according to the timeline. Sorry if the camera looks different. My battery died. I just had too many good points that we were going off of here. <laughs> the next thing you need to confirm is transportation. I mean, obviously if you're hiring a professional service, confirm that they're there, they're ready to go, they know what they're doing, they know what time to pick you up. But if you are not hiring a professional service, which I would hazard to guess is like 80% of you guys, you do need to confirm how you are getting from point A to point B to point C, D, et cetera. So if you're getting ready at one location, how are you getting from that location to your ceremony or to your first look? A lot of people will simply assume that there will be enough vehicles or that someone will just drive them and they will just magically arrive. This is one of the most commonly forgotten things on a wedding day. So to have this foresight to go like, okay, this person has a minivan or an SUV. Hey, can we pile eight girls into your car to get us from the getting ready location to the ceremony because then obviously that person needs to be mindful to not drink or imbibe as well so they can be DD for the rest of the wedding party. You don't have to hire anybody, but you do need to figure out what vehicles you're going into. You also need to figure out what vehicle you are leaving the party in. Again, doesn't have to be fancy, but make sure there's a sober person available to drive that vehicle for you, okay? And additionally, make sure if your wedding party is transported to the venue that there is an option for them afterwards. Yes, Uber and Lyft exist. If that is something that works in your area, great. Just let your wedding party know, hey, we can drive you there, but you might need to either get a ride yourself home or like, Uber, Lyft, whatever. It doesn't have to be fancy, it just needs to be a plan. This is also the time to confirm RSVPs. Uh, we typically say that RSVPs are due back 30 days before your event, so a whole month before. Why do we do that? Because you will be chasing down RSVPs until about two weeks before your event when your caterer goes, hey, I need those final numbers and you don't have a choice. So this is the time that you will be contacting, you know, those family members, those friends, that college roommate that has not replied yet. It is not fun. It is so frustrating and I know, I know during this time you and your like partner are like, I swear I will always RSVP on time for the rest of my life because it's driving me nuts. You will get through that phase. <laughs> I, I promise you, I know it's absolutely chaotic and I'm so sorry that you're going through this, but you will get through this. If you can employ um, anyone around you to help with these RSVPs, moms are great at this. Family members are great at this where you're just like, hey, can you call these 17 people for me and figure out what's going on? Um, this one is time consuming, but it's a very easy yes or no. And then once you have those RSVPs confirmed, that's when you can finalize your table layout and your seating chart. You should have some of this done beforehand, like a general idea of where tables are gonna go and whatnot. And if you can have a general idea of your seating chart as well, before you get to this point, that is really helpful. But even if you wait until a month before, two weeks before, pop open a good bottle of wine, okay? Put on a good chick flick and just just take your time, everything's gonna be okay, and there's always gonna be that one table that sucks, okay? That's just, them's the rules. And then, of course, you can put together your seating chart and or print up your escort cards accordingly. The last thing you need to confirm is your marriage license. Now, I, I marriage license requirements are different wherever you are. And make sure you bring it with you to your event so you can sign it if that is something you want to do at your event at that time. And then make sure you have a plan for who's going to mail that for you. My preferred method is to send it with the efficient. Just like it's the one thing that they have to worry about. I mean, it's a pretty big, pretty big thing. It's a, you know, legally binding document, but at least it's just like they sign it, they take it for you. Now, most of the time, this is a professional celebrant or efficient that will do that. 
Um, and very rarely is it like an uncle or a best friend or whatever. Usually that would end up being you. I'm I'm going into the weeds with details on this. Just make sure you have, you have your marriage license and make sure you know who is keeping an eye on it and mailing it afterwards. Next thing you need to do is tidy up. It's time to button up all those details, sis. You've been busting your behind for quite some time now, let's just make sure it looks organized. That includes your DIY stuff. Make sure it is well organized and well labeled. If you can have a list of items that you are bringing with you, awesome. Like I just, I love it when clients are like, here's the list of stuff. I use it as a checklist in the beginning and a checklist at the end because it's glorious because I don't know what they're bringing, only they know. So if you can put something like that together for yourself, for family and friends who are setting up or for a professional vendor such as myself who's doing that setup for you, like, so good. In addition to that, if you are working with people who don't do this for a living, if you could draw a map or like a legend or like a key, a key to show people where things are supposed to go, like, that will save you answering a bajillion questions. Neither one of these are of the utmost importance. It just makes your life so much easier. And because we're doing this like a month in advance or a couple weeks in advance, you have time, my friend. Get prepared because that day is already going to be like, it's gonna be stressful, so let's get some of this off your plate. You also need to tidy up who is bringing that stuff to the venue for you and taking it away for you. This includes cards and gifts. One thing we always ask our clients is, uh, which car and or hotel room would you like us to put your gifts into because we just don't like them staying out. Now, there aren't a whole lot of physical gifts. It's mostly the cards that we're concerned about. So like, where do you want these to go? In addition to that, where do you want all of your DIY stuff to go? Your signs, your table numbers, your, Anything that's yours that's like not an overnight bag, where are we putting this for you? And if you don't have someone like me in that position to help you out with that, someone is going to need to gather up those things and transport them away for you. So who's that gonna be and what car is that going in? How's it getting there and how's it getting back? You also need to tidy up your day of bag and your overnight bag and or honeymoon uh, suitcase should you be taking off the next morning. Make sure, oh, oh, we're getting dark. Make sure that you bring your overnight bag with you if you are leaving immediately from your reception to wherever you're going. Why? Someone forgot it. Someone forgot her overnight bag. 10 out of 10 do not recommend that. You also need to organize any sort of gifts you will be passing out, whether that's to your wedding party, to uh, your parents, to your spouse-to-be, whatever gifts you have, have them buttoned down as early as you can. So if you've got all of them ready to go like a month in advance, great. If it, like a week in advance, great. Just make sure that the morning of your wedding, you're not running around looking for all the name tags for the cute little Etsy handbags that you bought for everybody. Like, make sure you have that ready ahead of time. Like most things on this list, like it's not perishable. It's not gonna expire, turn rotten, or die if you put it together too early. So put it together too early. Um, and then the last thing you need to tidy up is uh, your emergency kit. I have a whole video on emergency kits. You can check it out right here if you want to. It's what I include in my bag and I also go through and like share like what I recommend a client has or a couple getting married versus like what I have because I'm extra, you know? So be sure to check that one out. And next, money. Let's make sure all of your money is buttoned down, ready to go. Final payments and tips. Final payments. I really do prefer for all of those to be done before you even step foot onto your wedding venue for your wedding day. Why? Because it's a nightmare to figure out on your wedding day, unless someone else is covering those for you. But even then, I think like just getting it out of the way, having all the payments done ahead of time is the smartest way to handle this. However, there are some vendors that will say, we can't know what we're charging you until the end of the night. Um, so we may come up with a bill later. There are some exceptions here, but have your payment avenue ready, whether that's a checkbook or the credit card or debit card it's going on to, make sure you have that with you. You don't wanna be stuck at the end of the night because you can't leave because you don't have the appropriate kind of payment. Secondary to that is start to get your tips ready. Organize them, put them into envelopes, and write the name on the envelopes of what company it's going to. And before you ask me about tips, it's all right here. I don't mean that sounds sassy, it's, but it's, it's a very specific question. It's like, well, does this person, does this person? It's all here. You can thank me later. Next up, everyday life stuff, okay? Now's the time when we just need to like hone in and get done with everyday life stuff. Wrap up work. Make sure you are done with as much work as possible. So ideally, I mean in an ideal world, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before your Saturday event, you're not doing any more work, okay? Some of us still have to work through, I get that. But as much as you can get off your plate early, work harder during the beginning of the week, you are entering into one of the most emotionally exhausting in the most beautiful way, days you will ever experience in your life. 
all right? It's going to be long, it's going to be fun, it's going to be emotional, and you're gonna need to devote a lot of attention to it. So any sort of downtime that you can provide your brain and your body before this big day is really important. So smushing as much work to the beginning of the week, very helpful. And maybe, just maybe try to pick up your house. I know it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Some of you are like, oh, Jamie, my house is never dirty. Cute, I don't, I can't relate. I got two and children. It's like that same exact feeling of like when you leave for a trip and you come home to a clean house, your mental space may need cleanliness when you come back home, all right? So because you are aware of this ahead of time, tidy up a little bit. Just make sure the dishes are in the dishwasher, clean surfaces, whatever makes you feel good, just make sure that's on your radar. I'm not telling you how to clean your house. I'm just saying you, you know you know you will feel better. <laughs> Now let's talk about you and your health. Everyone knows this, okay? Everyone knows this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. You need to make sure that you are eating nutrient-dense foods, okay? You also need to make sure that you're hydrating and sleeping. How your skin receives and behaves with makeup will be affected by how hydrated you are will be affected by how much you've slept. Your ability to get through this like sprint at the end for your rehearsal, rehearsal dinner, seeing out of town friends and family members, and you will be absolutely running on empty if you are not fueling your body as well. Now fuel it with what you know is nutritious and beneficial for your body and what you need, uh, but it's not the time to be withholding from any of that because we don't need you passing out on your wedding day, okay? And we need to make sure that you are hydrated and well slept enough that your makeup actually like isn't just damage control, It's highlighting your gorgeousness. And then last, but not least, you knew this was coming. Enjoy yourself. You worked really hard to get to this point. Get it all done as much as you can before you get to those last few days, okay? Because you're gonna wanna celebrate with your partner. You're gonna wanna spend time with out-of-town guests. You're gonna wanna have some downtime to sit down, relax, binge watch a TV show because you just need to check out for a little bit instead of having all of these details hound you up until the very last minute. Try to get it done ahead of time. And if you're watching this and you're like, <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting married tomorrow, um, so this has now increased my anxiety. Nope, that is absolutely not my intent. Cut from this list what is not feasible, all right? Now is not the time to go try on your dress with your Spanx. You're gonna do that tomorrow morning, okay? So deep breath, <laughs> it's gonna be okay. You've worked really hard and now you just need to take a step back and trust in the planning that you've done. Trust in the professional vendors that you've hired. You hired them for a reason. And trust that tomorrow or whenever your wedding day is, is going to be one of the most incredible days of your life because all of your favorite people are in one place hanging out, eating good food and celebrating with you because you have found your favorite person ever. It can be really hard to maintain that perspective in all of the chaos of planning and um, and details and lists, and but that's, that's why we're here. We're not just here because we like to party, okay? Like, I, I, I like, I love parties, otherwise I'd be in the wrong field. But we are here because you fell in love with somebody, all right? So that's all we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like the video, please like the video on down there. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. Oh, and if you wanna ring the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a video, <laughs> that'd be cool too. As always, there's a wealth of information in the description box down below. You can find us on Instagram, and and that's, I is not my usual sign off. So, and until next week, bye guys. <laughs>